right, welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Rise Urban Nation. I got my brother from the other mother, uh, Ewane, in the building today. Y'all may know him as E, but I'm going to call him Ewane. And I, I just found out some information. We just found some good information about both of us, and we want to just unpack that in this episode right now. Uh, my brother, let's first start off. What is the meaning of Ewane and, and where does this name originate from? So so the, the name itself is, uh, I mean, I like to look at it as it originates from the roots. It's definitely a sound and a name that, re that resonates across Africa because I've met people all across Africa. My parents were specifically in Cameroon, but I just wanted to preface that by saying that, you know, a lot of people don't know how the how the culture works there. There's a lot of people with a lot of the same names around all different places because yeah. it's, it's about what it means. So to get to that, it, it means like warrior, well born, noble birth. Yeah, I, and and the reason why we got into that because uh, my parents are from Nigeria. Uh, well, my 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 dad Nigerian, mom from New York. Uh, but my Nigerian given name was Ade Kunle, which means wealth is around you. Uh, hence to attribute to Ade Kunle gold. Yeah, okay, <laughs> that we was just, okay. we now was just riffing sense. on. <laughs> now it makes sense. Uh, now it all comes together and makes sense. So, so, uh, for all my big up to my people from Cameroon, Nigeria, all my Africans out there, we we we, we try to represent where wherever we go. So we we. Really bring the spirit and my brother's got the spirit with him today he, he's trying to these these new technology glasses for those who get in the video experience you'll get to see it you know it's funny that they're blue blue blocking glasses because they got this red tint but it look futuristic on it like uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, what we, that's what we going for some afrofuturism type type, type some afrofuturistic this like so my man is doing he 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 gq while he he helping his eyes and getting getting his sleep back <laughs> <laughs> also also but let's get into it man so for those who don't know iwane um who who is who who is e who is E? You know, break it down to us. You can go as far as wider with that. Uh, break it down to the people. Who who are you? Man, it's really simple. One of many, man. One of many. Mm. Uh, I look at it as, you know, we are definitely all connected. We're one. So I just am seeking as much as possible to get to, the, like, the uh, deepest or purest part of my own expression. But I also just mm -hmm. am really just like a lover of everyone, man. I don't get caught up in all the, maybe it's the rootedness, but I don't get caught up in all the separation. Like at the end of the day, it is what it is. Everybody has a unique perspective. And that's what I'm going off of is the, is the perspective that everyone's doing the best they can. Nice. I love that. I love that. And in the perspective of doing the best you can, I, I see your slogan is life to the highest degree. And how'd you come up with that? And, and where did the, the, the whole concept of life to the highest degree? Well, first, well, tell me where it came from and then tell me what that kind of means to you. Okay. Well, first and foremost, I'll say that, you know, um, they say that most artists over time or people over time, they simplify things. You get wiser, I suppose. Right. So right now we yeah. really just saying like life to the highest, but life to the highest degree is the, is the, is the classic, is the classic motto back in maybe 20 long time ago, 20, 2009, something like that. We, we were, uh, it was a group of people kind of like a consortium of like local influencers around, around, around the South. And we we're kind of like mm -hmm. coming together, trying to figure out how to get our projects off and the things that we were wanting to do. And that was the mentality. We were watching a little bit too much Godfather and a little bit too much of that type of stuff. <laughs> and people were just like, you know, life to the highest degree, you know, only the best, you know, the, the, the finer things, you know, especially when it came to love, loyalty and um, supporting one another's dreams. So that's that's where we got that like community mentality called a nightlife society, life to the highest degree. Yeah, I love that, and you definitely live in life to highest degree. Because when I look, when I when we first started chatting on LinkedIn, and I saw the bio, I was like, man, this man is a CEO. He's an inventor. He's a mastermind creator, public speaker, storyteller, coin carrier, and you just doing you doing you doing it all. <laughs> you live in life to the highest degree. Um, one thing I'm curious about: what is the coin carrier? What does that mean? Man, so there's a group that I'm a part of. It's like a, uh, it's like a uh, a, a community group, and they just t tell you to put that on there. 
to other people who's in the in the organization. <laughs> no, it's almost like some secret society type stuff, man. But it's really not secret. Like it's you part of the website. Illuminati. Yeah, it's just part of the way. <laughs> yeah, the Illuminati core. <laughs> Everybody else just don't want to put it up there. No, no, no. But it's 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 uh it's uh it's cool though. It's cool. It's just like a signifier for other people. But you see where it is on my list, man. I'm trying to got to keep things in perspective. There, absolutely, absolutely. So, so, um, tell us about the because one of the projects that uh, seems to be close and near to your your heart is uh, the society, which um you are currently CEO and president of, right? Yeah. And um, it looks like you guys are transforming one million lives by using tech in 2023. So tell me about how what is the society and, and how are you using tech to transform lives? So, man, basic, basic story is I was actually right in this office, maybe like six years, I mean, probably like a decade ago. We had this. I've had this office mm-hmm. since, since 2008. But like I was in here, you know, trying to do the Elon Musk thing before I ended up talking to this billionaire dude who said that it actually wasn't a true story. Point is, everybody knows about this whole story about Elon, like sleeping in his office. So I was like sleeping in here, man. The boys in the hood is sitting there. Bro, what are you doing? You know where I'm at, bro. I'm at the office trying to figure out life, bro. Like I'm trying to figure out how these dudes is doing what they doing <laughs> because I'm seeing what we doing and I'm not seeing the same results. Like I can't really put it in words now because... It was going to send me on a journey, but that's what I was doing. And so overall got shipped basically real quick after some some uh, some mistakes and failed attempts at certain businesses to Silicon Valley. And that's really where they're from for some years. I got mentored and got all this understanding of all these technologies that was coming in the future. So basically that the simplified version of it is we're taking the, the most advanced of technologies, putting everything together harmoniously, using that rhythm that we have, but converting that into technology and simply mm-hmm. allowing someone to lifestyle, their lifestyle holistically. And that's where we get into health. This is a healthcare building right here, but get into people's health, upgrading like you upgrade an iPhone, right? You just need the data sets mm-hmm. necessary for someone's medical profile to get a baseline. And then you just start giving recommendations towards, you know, a better life. And so that's where we start starting right now. Uh, Got some telemedicine t- software we're creating and some other stuff, but all really like again with the with the focus of people being able to self kind of like self govern themselves, their data, their um, you know who they give access to and share it with, especially when it, we're, we're talking about our uh, metadata, our biological mm-hmm. data, and things of that nature. I love that. So, tell me why, you know. When you look at tech, tech, you can get into anything in tech. And you specifically, it seems like you chose health as that that platform. Why tech and why health to elevate our community? All right, man. Let me. OK, so this one goes deep. This one goes deep because you use that C word, you know, community. Man, for me, I mean, <laughs> it was like I was always trying to, like, figure out how to both be a cool dude on the sports teams but also uh-huh. being like AP calculus. So I was like, there was some, there was some, there was some mixtures happening. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so on the math end, I loved math. Like, and I was really, really good at it, you know? And I was, I was just like, man, but the people that I was trying to be cool with was not in those classrooms. So it was just uh-huh. like, you, you trying to balance the two. So that was like high school. Right. So by the time I'm just graduating high school is when, right about when we started this business. So it was just like, I jumped straight into entrepreneurship weeks after high school ended and uh, and haven't looked back since. But at that time, I was looking at just doing things very brick and mortar. That was the limitation of my paradigm at the time. And then over Mm -hmm. time, as I would have the freedom to be able to study so many different giants, I'm like, wait a second, man. It don't even matter if it's a, you know, basket weaving company if they're doing however many in sales like they have a serious it tech division in whatever it is that they're doing whether that's just the logistics and them counting you know what's happening and coming through their doors or whether it's all digital and you're talking e-commerce and drop shipping you don't even oh you don't even have to own the product i'm like these type of things are coming into come, coming to me and so i'm looking mm-hmm. at the community again like i said over here the, the love of sports and culture and parties and music and all this type of stuff and everything over here which is like the ap calculus like 
what if I want to solve bigger problems? Like these problems that I care about seem like you need like a certain kind of mind to be able to do mm -hmm. these kinds of things. And so being able to balance those two things with an identity that was struggling with being able to hold both because I hadn't seen examples was like my entire process. So then like that, that mm -hmm. kind of got me to where mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, effort. I'm going to put it together in a way in which it appeals to both things. And healthcare was like my onset, right? Like it was like, Sports led me into healthcare in a lot of ways because I cared so much about being better. And then just ho so happened, most of my family, shout out to, you know, <laughs> African, but you know, most of my family, it was in healthcare. So it was just like those things combined. <laughs> I was just, <laughs> I was just always kind of thinking, you know, everybody had a solution for something that I was doing, you know, like, oh, you know, just take this pill and you'll be. You know, you have to take it for the rest of your life. You know, like that kind of that kind of mentality. I was like, OK, mm -hmm. we got to we got to do something new. So that's kind of where I made those roots. It was that I was already starting healthcare businesses. And so I was like, OK, tech is going to be the only way to be able to scale this, especially at a way in which you could really like go to the root of what, what it is that you wanted to do, which is really help heal people. Like I said, upgrade people's actual life experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and look at healthcare from a more holistic sense, where it's not just one thing or another that is affecting somebody. Somebody's mental, their emotional, their you know, their physical, spiritual, all going to feed into each other in different ways. Mm -hmm. And when people start talking about side effects, they're really direct effects, right? Like they're not like side effects. Mm -hmm. Like somebody takes something and then they have nausea the next day. That's a direct effect of what you took yesterday. Like the only reason you took it yesterday was because you wanted something else to go away, and you gained something else. Like so, it's like. The model, mm -hmm. the model is broken and tech and innovation is where, you know, the dreamers dream and where you look to solve those things that seem to be broken. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. I always tell people that, look, health is wealth. And I think, you know, um, if we go back to our roots, back to Africa, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the versus Western medicine, when you look at, you know, other holistic practices of medicine they look at the holistic standpoint of view whereas western medicine looks at you know curing that ailment and that's why you have all these different prescriptions that says oh it'll cure this but the side effects is blah 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 and it's, 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 it's like it's like it's like dang i, I want to cure this but i don't want hypertension and diabetes in the in the onset like <laughs> how, do I, how do i cure this without getting this <laughs> and, and i love that you you're taking that approach to it um to advance us and and in the whole more holistic way of healing and, and just moving forward um so i appreciate you so much uh man that's gonna be a beautiful thing man um i, I i'm excited i just, I'm, i want to jump on the journey with you already all right so <laughs> uh, and and just to talk about like real quick about like you know probably why our peoples is in that because i think you know, uh, at least what I get from the immigrant culture when they come over here and they 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 really uh, try to uh, move us forward towards like education, school, and so forth. There's like my friend, please, you are going to be lawyer, lawyer, doctor, or engineer, right? Yeah. Because yeah. this is the these are the 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 fields that make money to them and they're the safe bets. Exactly. 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 <laughs> and so that's why we tend to be in in bulk in one space or another <laughs> right no, that's exactly what it is it's a very it's it's like denzel was talking it's culture versus, it's not a color thing it's a culture thing you'd only be able to explain it to people like yourself who know like it's like the the pressure social pressure of doing one of those things is enormous it's not from just one person it's from like everyone in the community oh so um yeah. what, how, how is your school going which which which, which school are you going <laughs> which, which school are you going to <laughs> Are you, are, you, are, you, are, you getting, are you getting your masters? Yeah, are you, are you, you wait, uh, your, your yeah. PhD? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then don't, don't tell them you, you, you chose the arts. It's like, ah, ah, my friend, what, what, can, can you pay your bills with the arts? How, how will you eat? Huh? How will you eat? <laughs> exactly, exactly. While, while at the so same I, time talking to me about everybody, every new movies that's coming out and all kind of other stuff, right? They be all yeah. into the arts. They just don't really think about it as like something that makes money. But you catch, you catch all most immigrants, especially now with every everything that's happening in sports. I mean, half of the NFL, you have to say, you have to. These announcers got to learn how to say these Nigerian names. Like it's like, yeah. okay, um, they say his name is uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> or be um something. Okay, okay, I gotta practice this. Okay, I, I, I'll, I'm, I'm gonna hit it. I'm gonna hit it because because you'll hear him say it uh, while, while you're watching one of these sports things. You're like, dang, that was pretty good. There's no way you yeah. cannot practice that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he said it better than I do, <laughs> and I love the culture. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, oh man. Um, so tell me, um, your journey, like, uh, b- before you decided to embark on this journey, what did you do? Like, cause I always like giving people more context to the, the journey leading up to this, like the pre pre journey. Um, cause a lot of young people, they look at, uh, us as, you know, success figures and they're like, well, man, I got to start off with this master's degree. I got to get that good job. But sometimes it doesn't always start there. And everybody has a different journey. So um, I want you specifically to start off by telling me from the job standpoint, what was your first job? Man, uh, dang, I don't know what that Jay-Z line said. It was on, uh, I remember the song too, but I don't remember what he said. Something about, you know, uh, ain't never had a job, KD, something, something, something. So I didn't really have. So let me, so let me break it down. So I okay, some go point ahead, break it down, school, break it down. At some, at some point in high school, I started hustling a little bit, not like hustling, hustling, but like eBay. Like I was kind of like trying to flip some stuff on eBay. I was trying to figure out this whole thing where you like buy something that's only like two dollars at the end of uh-huh. the bidding thing. Like you know, like no one's bid yet. Right. Uh-huh. And you're like watching it because it's like, man, this is like 95 percent off. Like, but I want to get the bid in like 30 seconds before the time is over, you know, and then uh-huh. try to and then try to sell it somewhere else. Either that or keep it just because it's, it's cool. So that's kind of how I started. And I think I just started in the mindset and then I just got blessed. I mean, as soon as uh, well, I volunteered for like this uh, health kind of like um like for football games, like like college football games, they would let these high schools come in and do like um, kind of like your volunteers, like an EMT or something like that, right? Like you learn how, mm. how you could put them on a stretcher and so on and so forth. But that was about it, man. I thought I still had some hoop dreams. First week of high, uh, college, man, I'm still there. I'm at the, I'm at the Huff, which is like the, the, the a- athletic center at the college, like just giving people work, you know? I'm just like, uh, uh, uh. I'm thinking, you know, yeah. it, was, it, was, it wasn't wise, but I was what I was thinking. I get like two phone calls from my mom, and I like okay, like I, you know, I'm thinking, you know, she knows like when I'm when I'm playing, like I'm compet- I'm like I'm playing in my sport or my video game or whatever. So then she calls the second time. I'm like okay, there's something going on. So I hit her up. She's like, oh, can you like leave or you know whatever? I'm like, what? I was like, for what? Like it's just like she's like, please, you know that? I was like, man, I was like, all right, y'all, hey man, I'm about to go, you know, da 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 da, y'all, you know, somebody pick up for my spot. Um, and so then get, get outside and she starts telling me, she's like, yeah, you know, I, um, quit my job. And I was just like, you quit your job. I was like, all right, you know, shoot, what's up? You know, immediately I'm thinking, you know, that's how I'm always, I was like, I'm thinking like, shoot, what's next? Like, what's about to happen? And so she's just like, yeah, you know, she was talking to this person about us starting a business. And I was like. Man, I'm probably like, what was I, 17, 18 that time? And I was just like, shoot, man, let's run with it. You know, at this point, I was like, I, ain't, I don't even know what I'm here at college for yet. At this at this point, I'm still trying to figure it out. So um, I had just gotten into a big argument with her about going to the business college anyway. Why? Because of what we just spoke about. Two weeks prior, there's a little freshman yeah. orientation, man. And my mom is sitting there. That, that after we finished the little, they talked to all the black students, and they're just like, "Oh yeah, you know, da da da. We have these little programs to help y'all, da da da." And then, um, and then they're like, "All right, certain kids can go to, you know, this, you know, to business college. Some people can go to biology. Some people go to whatever." She's like, "Okay, we're going to biology." I was like, "No, I'm going to business." She's like, "We got. I mean, in front of people, you know, man, African women don't care. Like, we was right there in front <laughs> of everybody." And she's like, "You're going to biology." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I will not. I will not go. <laughs> I was like, I'm doing business. I'm doing business. And so then surprisingly, two weeks later, like I said, we ended up starting this business. So that was it, man. The only other thing I did, I did some R&D a couple of times. I went and tried to mm-hmm. like, there was like some group homes. And I tried to look like uh-huh. get a job there for like a week or two to kind of try to see what they was doing. Because we were trying to start a group <laughs> <laughs> and, 
<laughs> Boy, and they fired me too, and I felt some type of way about it, even though I was just there for, re- for, for, for some insight, man. But like, I was like, what do you mean? They're like, oh, somebody reported that you, what kind of system is this, man? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that was that right. was that was really my experience, man. It was it's been it's been very unique, but it's had a lot of mistakes because of that. Like having freedom at times is interesting because you have to learn how to actually discipline what it is that you would want to do to expand, right? Like as opposed to maybe like yeah. a company telling you how you would expand. I'm like, nah, like the next thing is definitely technology and it's like biotech and it's certain things. Like if I'm looking through the healthcare mm-hmm. lens. So I was like, I had to, I had to keep, I had to keep uh, like self choosing to go to the conferences we're talking about that are so awkward because <laughs> you walk in, depending on what you're wearing, I've gotten everything, man. Dudes walk up to me. Hey, um, I don't want to be offensive, but have you ever watched Coming yeah. to America? Like, I love that movie. <laughs> like, I absolutely, like, I don't care what nobody says. I love them. I'm just like looking at him like, yeah, I love the movie too, bro. Like, it's cool. Like, we cool. Okay. All right, man. Well, <laughs> good seeing you. Good meeting you. And uh, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> and it started becoming like a regular thing. Like, it was like, oh, you, have you seen Coming to I'm like, what is up with everybody that's coming to America thing, man? Like, yeah. So, you know, that's what it is, man. It's it's been a, It's been a journey, man. But, uh. I mean that's 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 the cool thing about it is that it, you you know you're able to tell some stories over the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and, and I, the the unique thing I love about your story is that it's not like everybody else's story where um, you started off at one specific point. Like your your story has a whole lot of pivots, and I mean when you go into business, business is about pivots anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> you you thought we was going this, we thought we was. Uh, well, at least one person thought they was you was doing biology, but no, we was doing business, and then, <laughs> then we went from business to like, all right, what type of business are we doing? And then um, there were there were probably different formulations to the business before you ended up to where you're at now. Um, what were you say? What would you say are the key steps that took you to where you currently are at in in career and business? Man, I'd say more than anything, it's been it's been family and friends. Like it's kind of like I mean, you got the internal kind of thing. I was always really involved in stuff. I'm, just, I'm not going to lie. I was definitely, you know, trying to do the most when I was young. I just had a lot of interest. And then it was like, at mm-hmm. some point, it had to be supported, though, by like a whole like village of people, right? Like that has that supported mm-hmm. all the moments in which I fall down because I definitely have dared greatly and continue to. And that necessarily is going to mean like, oh, yeah, man, I, I didn't really put in the context that when I went to Silicon Valley, and was preaching a decentralized social 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 network that most people there invested in Facebook, and were certainly not going to entertain me talking about something that would, you know, that would that would harm that particular investment. But I wasn't looking at it like that. Plus, I was looking like me. I had like suits on. They're like, we don't wear suits in Silicon. I'm like, man, bro. Like, I am just. I don't know what I'm trying to do out here, but I'm gonna try to figure it out one way or another, right? That was like that was like the the mentality. So I would say, yeah, the value is really been around like um loyalty you know around for me it's been around like friends and family and that's what creates like sustainability because it's like the Mm -hmm. necessary part of doing anything new like a little baby getting up and trying to walk for the first time is that if people Mm -hmm. a whole bunch of energy surrounding are like oh yeah you know no it's okay you can do it you know whatever whatever which actually silicon valley culture really is especially you know for those of us that didn't you know especially that are um, not seen as much in those spaces for the people who are seen a lot in those spaces that's the mentality they have i can go trick off 20 million dollars like i got for an investment and just try something like Mm -hmm. oh let's try to figure out if cars can fly like your people be like oh you know that's interesting Let's give him, let's give mm-hmm. him some money and see if we can go. Like we don't even expect yeah. him to actually make money. Like we just want to see what what they what they come up with. We got like like VC as you know, it's like we got like 10, 15 investments in the in the pool. Like we're not expecting ninety percent of these to work. Yeah. Um, it was like, but on on the offshoot that one of them does, we want to make sure that we invested in at least one of them. <laughs> exactly, exactly, which makes up for all the rest of them tenfold. Yeah. That you know, uh, your journey is so interesting. I I I, I want to know, like, throughout this journey, what what's one good lesson you feel life has taught you? Man, man, one good lesson. Uh, 
I say that we are one, man. I've been so many places around the globe. I realize so like so many people have the exact same problem. It just depends on where, you know, what what perspective they have on it, depending on where they are in the world, whether that be I ended up in Thailand, Norway, a few other places that I was just like, man, if this ain't the most different looking kind of but once you got deeper into it, it was like I got the same problems everybody else does. You know, everybody got a mama mm-hmm. and a daddy, they trying to either navigate if they were there or weren't there fully how they wanted them to be or whoever the situation was. They got siblings that they trying to like make things work with, whether they be biological or non, right? Like they got freaking trying to figure out whether or not they gonna have children or like how they want to have them or what they want to do with them. You know, it's just, it's still the majority mm-hmm. <laughs> of the same stuff. So I'd say that's the thing, man, is that people, um, you know, look at things more like, you know, we are one. Like, it's like the one lesson is like, so that everything I'm looking at, I'm like, okay, like, not only is it empowering because it means that I have the ability to have the same infinite, you know, potential as anyone else, but I also can encourage other people based off of that truth as well. Because it's just like, people will be like, oh, you know, how would I, so what do you mean? Like, how a human came up with how to fly with a airplane, I mean, with an airplane. Like, it's like, people come up with stuff every day. Like, it's not about whether or not people come up with stuff, people come up with stuff all the time. It's whether or not people like that baby um, feel like they're being encouraged to walk right there at the beginning is the most important part. When someone first has an idea, people are just like, well, how are you going to do that? It's like, well, how did you, how are you breathing right now? Like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, you're just killing something at the beginning of it. Like, it's an infant. It's innocent at this point. If anything, we should be protecting it like, like a warrior. Right, like usually you're protecting mm-hmm. that initial pe- like it's like this is an infant right now. So that's that's what I would say. Everyone has those. Uh, yeah, and and I, and I believe we all have. If 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 you, especially because I've gotten to travel and I got to experience individuals, you know, have these human experiences with individuals as I'm learning their culture and learning the differences between our culture. But those human experiences are are pretty much you know, the same in in context of, you know, maybe the problems or the things that they go through, uh, you know, uh, and I often laugh, like, cause uh, one of my good Filipino friends, I will see how his immigrant parents would talk to him being the first one black and, and they, they have that same culture. You're going to be a nurse or a doctor or like they, they have their own, you know, yeah. list of things that the, the, the kids should be because <laughs> their aspirations. We moved all the way over here. I didn't come here for you to become <laughs> this thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't shame and disgrace our family. I was like, man, that, that sounds like an Asian Nigerian parent right there. Like <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> was, uh, I definitely resonate with that. So the, I, Tell me this, like, um, you know, uh, I, I'm curious to see your advice on this particular part because it's your journey is a little different where you didn't go dur- down the regular, I'm going to get a job nine to five, work my way up a, through a corporation type of standpoint and then start a business like some of the other people that I've interviewed. Um, so let's say, for example, somebody listening to this episode is inspired by your story um, and they're just coming straight out of college or let's say if somebody who's at a nine to five, that's a dead end and they, they, they hear and they get inspired by like, Oh man, my man, my man, he, he just, he just, he just jumped into it. So I'm going to do that too. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 and, and I'm not saying that you encourage everybody to do that, or maybe you will, I don't know, but what would be your advice that you would give to somebody who would like to start a business like and, and get into the industry like you have? Um, what would be your advice? Do you do you do you advise them to just move straight to Silicon Valley like you did and and, and get into the tech tech space or like like what what was some advice you would give to somebody? Man, I would say the first thing, man, is 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 is, is rather is rather deep, man. It's more like. Um, finding your purpose first. Like I say, it's like, it's mm. like that's really the first, first thing is to go in and, and in, in whatever way people do it. And that's what I said. Everybody has so many unique ways. Some people like writing something down. Some people seeing something going someplace. Some people listen to some type of music or some type of sound or mm-hmm. talking to a certain friend or a certain family member or whatever. But whatever it is that <clears throat> aids people, it still breaks down to the intention. So like really like setting the intention. Okay. I'm going to figure out what I believe, the purpose is that I'm here for now. 
and you can project that out more in, in the more engineering mindset. So a lot of people have an engineering mindset of just being like, okay, like what would it look like at the end? And then reverse engineer all the way to the present. And then it makes it easier to see what that next step should be. Like it's just like you're just going to the next step and then the next step. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So it's really that that thing is about getting the like projecting out into the future, seeing the best possible uh, scenario, life to the highest degree, and then tracking back to where you are. And then it's going to be everyone's specific uh, hero's journey. But I'm definitely an advocate for people making the leap before you feel like you're ready. Because when people feel like they, mm. they, you know, like they are, you know, ready, is it's almost it's not like it's not even like it's too late. The actual perspective makes no sense because what they're saying is that I, at this current moment, am not good enough to start something. Which everybody was good enough to be born, which was to start something, a life. Like so, it's like you're definitely good enough mm -hmm. to start in the direction of whatever that first step is, even if it's going to read a couple pages of a free book or if it's to have a conversation with your auntie who happens to be in that direction now that you have really sat with mm -hmm. what is it that 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 my uh, my purpose is so that's what i would that's what i would get with that one great question though mm, i love that i love that um and sometimes you just have to take that first step and start the journey um so i love that piece of advice now for those like who are interested in the tech industry because the tech industry i feel like just is the 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 future the the down the present the wave whatever you want to call it um and it's and it's it's a space where i can see so many just you know um folks that look like us to create and and build and evolve like what would you say to to folks who who look like us like um who are interested in tech but haven't started or or have a tech idea like like you know do you feel that um that you know they should just jump in right away or what well now nah, you kind of answered that question but what i mean what is your overall consensus over over tech like when you look at the future of tech and what's in store for the tech industry especially specifically the people who look like us what does that look like for you let me ref let me let me rephrase the question to that <laughs> man i would say as different as we dance is as different as our tech should feel right like so it's mm -hmm. like when we look at our rhythm and our ways of doing things that's what i'm saying my experiences in silicon valley especially now that silicon valley is dissolving it's it's very interesting to see how like now all everybody in these little hubs all across the world have their little tech hubs. So it's like why mm. wouldn't we be able to bring, you know, some of that flavor? You know what I'm saying? That's 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 number one. But I also say that man, the future of tech is every industry and everything that anyone would want to do. That the, the way that things have gotten to even at this point right now, is that every single company that is what somebody would want to now dedicate their time to or their life to is mm -hmm. going to be a tech company. Like it's going to incorporate technology and having an understanding, not just a base level, but a deep level understanding of at least how the system itself works and how it mm -hmm. can then, you know, scale. Because tech, anything is incorporating technology is, is using technology as a tool to be able to scale, to be able to do things like make money while you're asleep i mean amazon works 24 7 the website it's a website but it works 24 7 it's not like you have to wake up in the morning and be like oh if i don't wake up by 4 a.m man like and do this trade man it's all over that's why i talk to my people that be doing trades and stuff. i'm like man i understand what you're saying like i've gotten into it before but the actual essence of what you're trying to aim for as an entrepreneur is to have more free time like more free mind mm -hmm. more free whatever it is that you care whatever describe word you use to describe it is to have more free of that so it's not actually mm -hmm. to build yourself a job like that's actually like feels like self self-induced torture mm -hmm. <laughs> like <it's> like, <laughs> <laughs> we see that so much in the african community right like they'll start like some business and they're just like everybody's like so stressed out it's like bro like the point of doing the business after leaving your other job was not to then still be stressed like the point was to figure out what it is that you are blessed with, like as a natural talent, mm -hmm. and which you can basically do with your eyes closed, and at least mm -hmm. make 
a, you know, ends meet. And then you can then have the freedom to be able to innovate because it's a skill that you already naturally have that you're cultivating. It's not like you had to force Lil Wayne to get in the studio. Like he knew he was good at this and he kept getting reinforced by all of his environment. You didn't have to force LeBron James to play basketball. Like he's doing it because he's gotten reinforced, like I said, by the community around him. You're good at this. You're good at this. Mm -hmm. You're good at this. You're good at this. You're good. I mean, how many people has he probably heard that from when he was between eight and 16? Crucial years for somebody to know, okay, like, you know what? I'm just going to go do this thing and keep building my particular skill. And then some people will take the strategic mentality to go, like I said, learn from another company, go get Intel, like, mm -hmm. in, intentionally. Like, okay, I want to go learn a little bit about what they're doing over here and then take it over here. Most big businesses, a lot of people don't know, especially in tech, they know that most of their employees will leave to go start their own companies. Like that's actually a very common thing in the tech world. Like mm -hmm. it's just like, all right, yeah, they'll take a little piece of what they were kind of doing there. And like the, the dude who started WhatsApp used to work at Facebook. Like it's like these types of things. Um, so yeah. yeah that, that's why I always tell people, look, I was, I was just on a consulting call earlier today and I, I literally said some of the things, but just in a different, uh manner i said look the the goal is to do what you do best and then automate or outsource the rest yes like yes you can't be all things and everything to your business <laughs> that's just what you would say that's just madness <laughs> yeah uh um and and, and so I, I love that you reinforced that um on the show today um now Another thing I hear you saying, and you could kind of allude, uh, the, there's two takes that I heard. I want you to elaborate on. Are you telling me that Silicon Valley is not what it used to be? Is Silicon Valley dying off and, and, and you see in different versions recreated? That's the first take. And then the second take I, I wanted to understand is um, when you when you talk about um uh um you know looking at your 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 business uh I, do you think if you know all these mom and pop shops african shops it are they doing their sales a disservice if they it, it, uh, if they don't automate some piece of their business with tech or get heavily involved with tech will 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 they die out or burn themselves out one of the two is that what you're alluding to so so you can start wherever you want to start with that yeah, I'm starting on the last one and say yes. I mean, the answer is yes. People are definitely either going to get destroyed from the from the from the changes that happen with technology upgrading by companies who are adopting it, and they will burn themselves out at the same time because it's the the, the two are happening at the same time in that model. You're not actually thinking about how to grow. You're not actually thinking about how to actually innovate and and to. Um, create better solutions for the people who are um, exchanging with your business, and so that one to me is is a little bit is a little bit more obvious. It's about as obvious as the Netflix and Blockbuster thing. Like it doesn't really matter the size that you are. If something comes in and is completely like better than what you were dealing with previously, like everyone is going to be like like people don't have loyalty like that. Um, <laughs> They, so you would you just wouldn't be able to sustain and you know but there is a hedge to that which I always like is advice that, you know I do like the um, the classic African you know Donald Trump even a controversial person but is an easy example of a model in which your family is incorporated into what it is that you're doing because then you might have like a nephew who's very innovative or like a whatever and like people will coalesce in a way that well they'll know the people who would be the ones that would save them if they start getting into hot water in regards to business. Like I've had to do that many times with some of our businesses where it's like certain things like getting lines of credit or understanding how to, you know, leverage anything um, is like a different kind of mentality. It actually looks at the system as something that you can, um, that you can gain things from, not just like having money sitting and not circulating. So that's the first thing. The second one, Silicon Valley, man, it, it's an interesting relationship I have with Silicon Valley. I think that in a lot of ways, yes, it has, it has, it had to change, and a lot of the companies who were involved in a lot of the Silicon Valley um, heyday are also moving a lot of operations as well. So you definitely see 
um, from multiple angles, both that and also even just like the college is college for most young people nowadays, Gen Z and then Gen Alpha coming soon, um, are not as, you know, um, college, uh, focused as, as others have been, especially ones that are more entrepreneurially minded. And so I feel like that's what those companies in Silicon Valley most were taking advantage of. But now around the world, you're starting to have more and more tech hubs pop up um, in a number of countries in Africa. I'm definitely always focused on that. But then a lot of countries in Europe, I mean, places in Europe, even the Philippines and like Singapore and some of these places have a lot of interesting ways in which a lot of the people are actually very tech advanced. Like the Philippines, most people have like um, games and things that they're into, like um, mobile games and video games and things of that nature, which is generally more advanced, but they definitely have incorporated it into their, their society now. And um, I, yeah, so I think that that's just a natural effect of decentralization, which gets into you know some of the more new tech like blockchain, crypto, and these things, and people just being able to realize that I can do anything I want to right from where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't need to actually move to California. I mean, first off, the taxes, right? But, <laughs> but then second off, so on and so <laughs> forth, whatever, right? But see, I'm also, I say that with a grain of salt because I'm also a huge fan. I was just in California. I'm a huge fan. I don't really care about taxes that much. But I'm saying for people that do, like there are yeah. reasons for why they would go places and then complain are usually those types of things. Like, oh, the taxes or the something, something, something. But if I can be, you know, in Nashville, Tennessee, and be able to operate my tech company around the entire region from my from my home or from a local you know mm-hmm. workspace um those things are increasingly possible now and people are constantly teaching those models now so people will continue learning that model as an option and most people don't really want to leave right like it's a common misunderstanding that people like yeah travel is nice but most people like the comfortability if they have a kid that the people that they already know help them taking care, take care of it. Like the society builds itself off of community models. Like the people don't like to just uproot and like move. That's why you, like you said, the foreign thing, that's why they get so strict. <laughs> They're like, man, if you only knew what I had to do to get all the way over here and you want to go over here messing around with these useless boys. <laughs> <laughs> the struggle is real the struggle is real you know you know um speaking of texas uh you know i was out in austin probably like uh earlier part of this year and i was amazed at the tech hub that they got out there i thought i i thought i was in silicon valley and when i looked around at certain parts i was like google fiber was over here and indeed was over there i was like i was like wait where am i am i am i in Austin, Texas? Like, yep. where am I? <laughs> like, I, I was so confused as to where I was at. So I, I, I definitely uh, feel you in some of those uh, in, the, in some of that commentary. Yeah, I've been, now, I've, been, um, I've, been uh, I've been calling it Silicon South, man. You heard it here first. Silicon South? Okay, I'm on yeah, for it. We, got like, we got like Austin, we got like Austin, Miami, specifically. And then, you know, it, there's other little places, Dallas, but definitely Austin and Miami. Silicon South. Lay. Lay. So I, I, I'm just shocked at, at the, the progression and the transition. I think I want to say, if I'm not mistaken, I, I I think I even saw a couple of Californians that had already moved into those bases. <laughs> not, I could be wrong, but I, I, I want to say I saw some Californians out there. <laughs> a whole, whole bunch of them, man. That's I mean, Elon moved the, like stuff to Texas. That's what that's what like the whole wind just started right when the pandemic happened. Everybody who had above you know, minimum wage or had like a freelancer type of job, like just like took off from California and either went to Florida or Texas because of, you know, political reasons. But yeah, but it definitely was like a huge movement. A lot of different, a lot of different things. And just the last two years have changed in those two places. I grew up in the South and I never knew those places as tech hubs. It's just, this is all recent and, and definitely been a lot of pushback um from from silicon valley as of recently about like it's like they're losing all this these major players and workforce i mean the elon one was huge i mean they were just like all right well mm-hmm. you know that was a power play he's like man i'm getting out of dodge went to texas and immediately his net worth shot up like how many billion why he doesn't have any of the same taxes like it's the <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, tax benefit to running your business out, yeah. out of certain places <laughs> yeah 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 
the next week we might move to Puerto Rico. No taxes. <laughs> yeah, man, bro. I got a couple friends in Puerto Rico right now, bro. They took off. One of them was in L.A. He was there with his old lady. And he was like, and they actually just had a child born in Puerto Rico. Like, literally, he's a, he's a L.A. dude, but he got big in, te- in, in crypto for a little bit. Uh, a brother too, and he he um he yeah he just he just made the he just made the leap, man. I was like, you're in Puerto Rico. He's like, bro, I'm in Puerto Rico, bro. He's like, I'm going long, on, I'm going long on the crypto, bro. Metaverse, all this stuff. He's he's in it, man. And, and let me remind you, folks, Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory. Yes, no sir. Taxes. <laughs> yes, sir. At least at least um, at least at least start something up. You know how to how to how to uh, have a friend stay there for because I think you got to stay there for like six months out of the year or something to get the initial tax benefit. There's, there's some, there's some things to it, but you can definitely do it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we we'll might have to come back to that in another episode to, to talk to folks and help them learn about that. Maybe, maybe we might do it in like a class or something. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a side off E class. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yes, Anyways. Um, uh, I, I usually like to keep these episodes of drive time and man, I know me and you can keep talking forever. So let's, let's do a nice little wrap up like this. What projects are you currently working on and where can people find you? Man, easiest places to find me is going to be all social media is pretty much the same thing. Um, and then when you're looking at the project, man, just, just stay tuned. Really. It's going to be my social media where I'm going to release most of the stuff, but things is working. We got a private telegram group, a few other things, a Slack channel and a few other things that people can join. If they're really interested, they can hit me up. But yeah, all of my socials are going to be easy. E-W-A-N-E-M-A-S-A-N-G-O. And you know, now you know where to go. All right, my boy E, I appreciate you for stopping by. Just, uh, you know, blessing us with your, your story your knowledge and insights. And I can't wait for us to connect with the projects that's coming up in the future. Any last words of wisdom for the people before we sign off? Yeah, man. I had a I had a mentor recently who was talking about, he said that um, intelligence is hitting a target that no one else can. And genius is hitting mm. a target that no one else can see. So basically, it's like at the mm. beginning, there's going to be those those people that don't understand what you're, what you're, what you're, what you're envisioning. But as long as you treat it like an infant child, man, like eventually it's going, it's going to flourish. It's going to have them growth spurts that everybody is accustomed to. Mm, those are, that, that was, that was a mic drop right there. I don't even know how to follow that up, but <laughs> we're going to have to, if you need to hear that again, re- rewind it and replay it again and, and say it for the people in the back. <laughs> so, so you can get that knowledge into you. Um, I appreciate you brother. And uh, we're going to catch you on the next time. Peace.